Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Oh my goodness, it's been a bit of a while since I came on here with an update. Now, the last few months have been a little bit chaotic and I'm fully aware that the last time I came on here, I was like, I'm struggling with my thyroid a bit and I've had to take some time out, but I'll be back to explain soon. And that was like six months ago. And here I am in December, finally updating you. So I'm really sorry if anyone has actually been waiting for this update, but I thought I'd just talk you through a little bit about my thyroid journey and what's been happening since I last spoke to you. I can't actually remember the last update I gave you guys, so I'm just gonna start from the beginning. So I was diagnosed with Graves' disease a long time ago, had a thyroidectomy, I've done a whole video on all that stuff, and I will link that down below if you wanna watch it. Then in May this year, I had radioactive iodine treatment. Now this is something I've been thinking about for a long time to treat my Graves' disease and my overactive thyroid. I was fed up with it keep going up and down and I just wanted a kind of more long-term solution. So the last time I spoke to you was a few months post radioactive iodine and basically for the first few months afterwards like nothing happened. So oh I've got cramp on my toe. So the first few months after I had the iodine um, I had to come off my carbimazole, which was repressing my thyroid before I had the iodine. And I was warned that sometimes with Graves' disease, your thyroid levels can spike. So I had the iodine and I kept having like the regular blood tests and my thyroid levels were just going like up and up and up. And I was feeling more like anxious. I was feeling hot, sweaty all the time. My heart rate in the gym was like through the roof. I wear like a heart rate monitor. Um, as part of like something we do at the gym and mine was like ridiculously high like I was walking upstairs and my heart rate was going like 200 beats a minute plus and I was like this just isn't normal like getting really bad palpitations feeling like quite ragey all the common thyroid symptoms have when I go overactive and I was thinking this isn't right like the iodine is supposed to stop my thyroid not encourage it so I had really good care from the team at the hospital and they were in touch with me a lot. I contacted them, um, they got me a blood test straight away and it turned out my thyroid levels were like really high. So I got put back on the carbon result and by this point I was convinced the iodine just hadn't worked. I thought well, you know, it's supposed to slow my thyroid down, I was expecting it to go underactive and it just was getting higher and higher and I was like I don't understand how this is possible. So anyway, I went back on the carbimazole and I think that might be about the last time I spoke to you guys. So since then, a lot has happened, let me fill you in. So I went on the carbimazole and then I suddenly started feeling really tired. There's tiredness and then there's this level of tired. So I was basically waking up. I was sleeping for like 14 hours straight, solidly, waking up feeling exhausted like I needed to go back to sleep. And it was such a struggle to actually get out of bed. I've never felt like exhaustion like it. I couldn't face doing everyday tasks, like the thought of just like changing the duvet cover or like cooking dinner. It was just, it was too much, it was exhausting. I just wanted to lie down. I was getting angry at myself. I felt like I was being really lazy. I was like, oh, why do I feel like this all the time? I was freezing cold all the time. And then I started to think, hang on, this is like the opposite of when my thyroid goes overactive, so maybe it's now going underactive. I sent an email to my nurses and I was basically like, look, all this is happening, I feel cold, I feel tired, like exhausted, I feel constipated, like there's just, my body has just basically felt like it had just given up. And so I just kind of got to the point where I was like, I need some help with this. So I spoke to the nurses, they got me a blood test again really quickly, Turns out my thyroid had gone from like way up here to like way down here. The nurse rang me and she was like, how are you getting out of bed? Like this is ridiculously low. So anyway, they were like, right, this is it. I was like, this is the moment I've been waiting for. The radioactive iodine has worked. So I got put on thyroxine straight away and within a few days my symptoms did start to get a lot better. It's been a bit of a steady process since then. That was probably, August, September time. So I had regular like blood tests, checking my levels, basically getting to a point where they were happy with where my thyroid was. And once they were happy that my levels were stable and they'd stayed stable, they have now signed me off of their care and back to my GP for like the routine stuff. So 
in short, the radioactive iodine worked. I was still in a bit of shock because I just really had this gut feeling it wasn't going to work and I was so sure when it went overactive that was it, I was going to have to have it again and obviously doing like the isolating and stuff, it was just horrible, I really didn't want to go through that again. So I'm so pleased that it now appears to work and I think even though there's still going to be a bit of adjustment time, my levels might still go up and down a little bit as like, you know, hormones change and all this stuff but in theory, this should now be, fingers crossed, touch wood, like how it is now. I will be on thyroid replacement hormone for life, um, but I can actually manage my condition without having like the massive spikes, which were just horrendous. Graves disease is really hard and it's difficult and it's stressful and it's horrible when you think it's like gone into remission and it comes back again and I'm hoping now this will have stopped all of that. So I'm really, really optimistic that hopefully I'll keep having the blood test, it will keep being level and finally after like, I don't know what it's been, like a 15, 16 year journey at least, maybe 20 years, I don't know, a long time, finally it might actually be as fixed as it can be. But yeah, so that is my thyroid update. I hope this has been really helpful and if anyone's considering radioactive iodine, honestly, compared to the surgery, it has been a doddle. Having had the surgery and how like big that was for me, I kind of wish I'd done the iodine first. I didn't really understand about it when it was like the time for me making that choice and I think if I could go back and do it all, I'd probably do that now. So my only other thing now is to get referred back to someone to see about the cyst in my thyroid, which yes, everybody likes to comment on in my videos. I'm only posting recipes, I don't want anyone to comment on how my neck looks. But I just really hope this has been helpful. Um, I hope it's helped anyone who's thinking about doing radioactive iodine or has been through this journey, just to kind of get a personal perspective of what it's been like for me. Obviously, full disclaimer, I'm not a medical professional. I'm not giving any medical advice. I'm just purely telling you my own personal experience. I'll link my other thyroid blog posts and my thyroid videos um, below in the description. If you like this, stick around, have a look at all my recipes, uh, hit subscribe, give this video a like, and let me know in the comments if you found this useful because I'm always trying to kind of make things that are helpful, so it's always good to know. And yeah, I will try and be better at vlogging and try get back into a routine of doing it because I miss speaking to you guys. So yeah, let me know if there's anything you want to see and I'll see you soon. Bye. I can't feel my feet. I can't feel my feet. Please.